We're watching any given Thursday here on Chat Sports. He's Chase Sr. I'm Harrison Graham. Five big name NBA trade candidates that could get moved before the NBA trade deadline, which of course isn't all the way until March. But let's start with the most obvious one here, Chase. Yep. Ben Simmons of the Philadelphia 76ers, who is sort of back with the team, but not really because he's not playing, but he has at least been in the building some. But Ben Simmons, a guy we both believe will get dealt at some point. I think it's inevitable. I think it's only a matter of time. That relationship between him and the organization is certainly contentious right now. He's been kind of a part of practices, but not really. He's been at the facility in Camden, New Jersey, partaking in some workouts, but he's dealing with a back issue, also dealing with some mental health issues. And during this time, he's with the team, but kind of away from it. And look, Daryl Morey is not going to budge when it comes to these Ben Simmons trade discussions, Harrison. He wants an all-star player back. And I think he's going to look at the landscape, canvas it over the next couple of weeks, maybe even months to see which trade candidates are out there. And he's going to try to leverage another team into giving up an all-star for Ben Simmons. And I think Simmons is worth an NBA all-star caliber player. We're talking about a guy who's made it to three NBA all-star games, back-to-back first-team all-defender, and he has a couple of elite traits. Size, athleticism, passing ability out in the open floor. Everybody loves to rip him for his inability and unwillingness to shoot the rock, but he does a bunch of things well. I'd make the argument he's the best defender in the league, and nowadays when offenses are going crazy, putting the biscuit in the basket, you need a lockdown defender. Ben Simmons is that. So I think he's going to get traded at some point. Daryl Morey just wants a quality player back because you don't give up a three-time all-star for nothing who's one of the best all-around players in the game still. So we both think he's going to get traded, so we're not going to ask that. What we are going to ask, will Ben Simmons play another game with the 76ers? Type Y for yes, type in for no. We'll make this the pinned comment on today's video, and then we'll get to the next player on our list. All right, number two, NBA trade candidates, some big name guys here. Kyrie Irving, Chase, and I think this one's a little bit more of a tricky situation because uh, obviously uh, Kyrie has not played this year. He remains out uh, as the Brooklyn Nets don't want to play him as a part-time player, and due to the New York City uh, local mandates, he cannot play in home games right now due to his unvaccinated status, so they've decided not to play him. Uh, obviously, Irving is a hell of a talent. We all know that. We all think that uh, uh, he would help the Nets tremendously. They have actually acknowledged that time and time again here, but the reality is, does the team really want him? Does the team really want the drama of Kyrie Irving? The vaccination thing isn't really the main part of his drama. Yeah, it's a big part currently, but he got ran out of Boston because he did not mesh with the young guys very well. He missed several games last season because of, you know, whatever personal issues he was dealing with. And I get it. We all have stuff that pops up and we have to take a day off of work. I get all that, but it happened a lot with Kyrie. My question is, who actually wants this guy? Now, I think there's a couple of teams that would like to have him. I think the Lakers and LeBron would take him due to the inconsistent play of Russell Westbrook. But are the Nets going to take Russ back with Kevin Durant? I don't think so. I don't think there's any way those two guys play together again, Chase. So I think when you slice and dice this up, if you're Brooklyn, your best hope is that the mandates get lifted and you get Kyrie back because I don't think you're getting that much for him. Here's something to follow. The new New York City mayor-elect Eric Adams did say once he takes office in January, he's going to revisit the COVID guidelines in New York City. So if he decides to change, change some of those rules, Kyrie Irving, if he's still not vaccinated up to that point, sure. can then rejoin the Brooklyn Nets as a full participant. They just don't want him being a part-time participant where he's at some practices only playing at games on the road Basically, because no you're practices. just not able to build any type of continuity. And what's crazy, Nets haven't looked like the same team with some of no. the changes in the rules, changes to the basketball. James Harden hasn't been the same player. They look like they need Kyrie Irving or at least another third piece to join alongside KD as well as James Harden. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that uh, entire sentiment because uh, – it's been a uh, it's, it's it's just been a weird start to the season for a lot of teams, not just the Brooklyn Nets. Bet US is our sportsbook partner here at Chat Sports, and if you want to bet on the NBA all season long, there's only one place to do it. It's ChatSports.com/bet. Use our promo code Chat125. That'll get you 125% deposit bonus. You can bet on your favorite team. You can do prop bets like who's going to win the MVP, or you can bet on the NBA championship. Now those Brooklyn Nets still are favored at plus 275. Uh, but uh, I certainly think that uh, 
that that could change at some point in time. So if you want to bet on them or the Lakers or another team like the Milwaukee Bucks, who as of now uh, are on the outside looking in for the playoff picture, chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code chat125. And if you're a beginner, say you want to put 10 bucks on the Bucks. Uh, if they ended up winning, you'd win $80. That's the plus 800. 10 bucks on the Nets, you'd win 2750 So on and so forth. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code chat125. All right, we'll get to our next player here. Big name trade candidates here on any given Thursday. We went through Ben Simmons and Kyrie. How about Damian Lillard, Chase? And there's certainly been a lot of chatter around him going back to the offseason, but even more so as of late. Yeah, and we're going to talk about Damian Lillard coming up a little bit in our Lakers segment because Chris Haynes did a fascinating article into the offseason meeting between Damian Lillard, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis on LeBron's rooftop in the Los Angeles area. Damian Lillard has been just incredibly loyal to the Portland Trailblazers, and I respect him for that. Look, he got drafted by this team. They identified him coming out of Weber State, and he's turned out to be one of the best offensive players that we've ever seen over the course of modern NBA history with his ability to basically be a scoring threat as soon as he crosses half court. But he has said that he wants to stay in Portland. He really values being a Trailblazers legend. He wants to be the guy to deliver them a championship. But the Blazers aren't off to the greatest start. He's also gotten off to a good start with head coach Chauncey Billups. But if the Blazers start to free fall, Damian Lillard spoke out about his frustrations during the offseason because of the lack of postseason success that the Blazers have had really throughout his entire tenure, with the exception of making it to the Western Conference Finals back in 2018. He wants to win. That's the lone notch that's missing from his resume. And if they get off to a bad start, I could easily see Damian Lillard saying, look, I've been loyal to Portland for so long. I know that I have dozens of friends and family members who have moved to the city, but I need to win, and I won out, and the best chance for me to win a championship is not here. Please deal me. It allows you guys to reboot and rebuild. I won't even spin it anymore, Chase. It's never going to happen in Portland. He will not win a title there because – Star players don't want to go to Portland, Oregon. They just don't. I, 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 it sounds crappy. It, it, you know, LeBron was able to, you know, get it done in Cleveland, but that's because they were able to draft Kyrie Irving. They were able to trade for Kevin Love. Dame's not going to get a Kevin Durant to Portland. He's not going to get a Steph Curry to Portland to join up with him. It's just not going to happen. His best chance was over time, like Golden State did, to draft these superstars and have them evolve. It's very hard to do that. I mean, let's be honest. The Warriors got lucky by hitting on three straight draft picks, basically. It's not going to happen for Dame in Portland. So he's got to decide long term. Does he want to be this loyal guy that never leaves and he's a one-team guy? That's very admirable. Or does he want a title? If he wants to win a title, it's not going to be with the Portland Trailblazers. That's just my two cents on it. Obviously, we'll have to wait and see what happens over time. Subscribe to us here at Chat Sports, youtube.com slash chat sports TV. If you want daily free, 100% free NBA videos throughout the season, we will continue to have you guys covered. Tons of NFL videos as well. YouTube.com slash chat sports TV. Do not miss any of our coverage here on chat sports. All right, next up is Bradley Beal. Uh, Chase, I don't know what it is. I don't know why he's content in Washington, but it just seems that that is the case. Maybe that ends up changing. The Wizards now with a more well-rounded well roster, excuse me, as compared to that top-heavy roster from last yeah. year, are off to a better start this season. Yeah. Now, what's crazy is that Bradley Beal's numbers, like Damian Lillard's, have been abysmal to start the year. His yeah. shooting numbers are down. His points per game are down as well. The production hasn't been the same. Now, a lot of these players are adjusting to a new basketball. Some of these Often shooters and high-energy offensive players are blaming the change in the basketball for some of their shooting numbers going down. I think they're going to adjust to that over time. But I put Bradley Beal kind of in that same conversation as Damian Lillard. They've been loyal to their respective franchises since getting drafted by those teams. But again, if the losses start to pile up, you got a short shelf life as a professional athlete. And at the end of the day, the main motivation and the main goal is to win a championship. And if they don't believe that they can do it with their respective franchises in those respective cities, they have the power in the player empowerment era to force a trade somewhere. And man, the Wizards could get a haul, like the Blazers could get a haul for Bradley Beal. See, you say the main goal is to win a championship. What evidence do we have that that's what Bradley Beal wants to do? I, I, I don't know any evidence that we have. Loyalty, I guess. I, I, 
I, but he hasn't, like, it's not like he's come out and been like, this is my city, like Damian Lillard has. Like, he just hasn't requested a trade for whatever reason. Like, now we don't know what happens behind closed doors, but Bradley Beal, now, just because he may not be incredibly motivated for championships doesn't mean he's not a good player or leader or doesn't want to do whatever it takes to win. I'm just saying, I think he's pretty comfortable, right? Like, he makes a bunch of money. He gets to shoot as much as he wants with the Washington Wizards. And there's no pressure in D.C., let's be honest. Like, no one cares about the Washington Wizards outside of, you know, that niche diehard fan base that's probably there locally. Right. Uh, do we ever see ESPN or any major network talking about the Wizards? No, we don't, because – no one cares. Small market basketball team. Uh, they aren't successful. And Bradley Beal can just kind of hang out, be the alpha male on that team. If they win, cool. If not, no big deal. Now, maybe that changes for him at some point, but I don't think there's a lot of evidence that we have that he's just like chasing championships. And I'm not saying that, you know, going, you know, the super team route is always the best option. I'm just saying like, I think the guy's comfortable in hell. I don't blame him. He makes $35 million <laughs> a year nice. to shoot the ball 25 like times cheddar. a game. It's a yeah. pretty good gig he's got in D.C. Who would you rather have for your favorite team out there? Would you rather have Damian Lillard or would you rather have Bradley Beal? Type DL for Dame, type BB for Bradley Beal. Obviously, it depends on your personnel on your roster. I think in general, I'd rather take Dame, but yeah, I'm I do going think it's, uh, it's pretty close. If you already have a really good point guard, maybe the answer is Bradley Beal. Let us know what you guys think down in the comments. All right, number five here. I kind of threw this one in. There hadn't been a ton of buzz, but Carl Anthony Towns, Chase, I think it's a big year for Minnesota. If things don't go well over the next couple months, maybe he or – one of those other players, D'Angelo Russell, could end up being on the move. So there actually is recent buzz, and we have a hack gate going on oh. once again because a lot of fans were hitting up Carl Anthony Towns on social media saying things like, free cat, Carl Anthony Towns probably can't wait for his contract to expire, and he was liking some of those posts. And then he comes out on Thursday, right before we start recording AGT Live, as we go live every single Thursday, that he got hacked. And his agent hit him <laughs> up in the morning and said, Carl, What's going on with your Twitter feed? And he's like, I don't know what the F is going on. What are you talking about? Yeah, you were probably liking those posts because for a <laughs> long time, ever since you got drafted to the Minnesota Timberwolves, this has been a franchise that has been inept and they haven't reached expectations. This is going to be a massive, massive year for the Minnesota Timberwolves' young core. They have some pieces on that roster that are pretty talented. D'Angelo Russell can't seem to stay healthy, but I do like Anthony Edwards. Carl Anthony Towns is no doubt one of the best big men across the entire NBA. But at what point do you just say, I've had enough. Now, it hasn't happened with the Bradley Beal or Damian Lillard, but for Carl Anthony Towns, he's younger than all those guys, and he has a lot more gas left in the tank than a Dame or a Bradley Beal, even though they're not necessarily long in the tooth either. But i just like to see these guys be a part of a winning atmosphere in a winning culture because it's a bummer when elite talent gets overshadowed by them just being a part of a dysfunctional franchise that doesn't have any postseason success. So big year for the Minnesota Timberwolves core. If they flame out this season, I could see Cat being like, yo, the writing's on the wall, man. I've been here for a little while. It's time for me to jump shit because we ain't winning enough games. And this guy is a guy who can put up monster numbers. Yeah, and you guys watching are probably like, oh, you just want the stars to go to big markets. I'm not, not saying that. I just not, want them to be yeah, uh, yeah, in the playoffs. Yeah, and that's not true. I loved the Bucks and the Suns in the finals yeah, last year. Yeah, it's good. Year. It was awesome, and the ratings were up from the year before. So I think if there's entertaining basketball, people are going to watch. My point is – I think Portland, while it's done some good things over the years, hasn't done enough to build around Damian Lillard. I think Minnesota has been dysfunctional since Kevin Garnett left. Like, some franchises just don't change. <laughs> like, and I think Minnesota, I give them credit for trying. I think they had a good draft with, uh, uh, with uh, Anthony Edwards last year. I like the D'Lo trade. He just hadn't been able to stay healthy. Our point is, this is kind of the year for them. If, if they can't show real growth together – then at some point you're like, well, maybe this just isn't going to work and we need to hit the reset button yet again if you are Minnesota. So those are our five guys that could get traded at some point. What do you guys think? Name a player that you think should get traded before the NBA trade deadline. Obviously, basketball is just now getting back in the last couple of weeks. Things will obviously change over the next couple months.